Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Lieutenant General United States Air Force Lester L. Lyles, the director of the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization. Uh, General Lyles will have a brief opening statement and then uh, be followed by question and answers, at which time Brigadier General Joseph M. Cusmano, uh, the United States Army, uh, the program manager for the National Missile Defense uh, Program, will join him here at the podium for questions and answers. General Lyles. Thank you, Dick, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm here to uh, announce the selection of the lead system integrator for the National Missile Defense Program. As most of you know, our competition has been underway for a year between uh, Boeing and the United Missile Defense Company, a joint venture between Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and TRW. As the director of the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization and the acquisition executive for missile defense programs in the Department of Defense, uh, I was designated as a source selection authority for this particular source selection. And in that capacity, uh, with the support of a lot of people, I've made my decision. While the major program, uh, this is a major program milestone for NMD in that it formally starts the development of a integrated system to protect the United States from a limited missile attack, uh, this selection of a lead systems integrator is not a commitment to build or to deploy a national missile defense system. It also does not signal a return to the previous development efforts to, to, to build a missile defense against a massive missile attack upon the United States. The role of the lead systems integrator will be to, to design, to develop, to test, and to integrate a capability to defend the United States against a limited ballistic missile attack upon any of our 50 states by either a rogue nation or from one of the uh, current nuclear powers in an ac accidental or unauthorized launch. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce that the uh, selection of Boeing as the lead systems integrator for our National Missile Defense Program. The contract value for the base three-year period is $1.6 billion, with options in the contract for either deployment or sustainment for a limited period of time or continued development. The total contract value comes up to about $5.2 billion. The other offer, UMDC, United Missile Defense Company, provided an innovative and very comprehensive plan for national missile defense. However, we selected Boeing based upon reaching a best value determination by the government source selection team and by me. The factors we evaluated against were those detailed in our request for proposal. They included technical, management, past performance, and cost. And costs included both instant contract cost and life cycle cost. We will explain in detail our evaluation to Boeing and if requested, also to UMDC, and we'll be doing this within the next couple of weeks. The award of this contract is in full compliance with the laws and intent of Congress. Let me reiterate before we close for question, and as I stated earlier, no decision has been made to deploy a national missile defense system. Rather, we are continuing our development efforts to design a system with the capability to protect all 50 states from a limited missile attack from a rogue nation or an accidental or unauthorized launch from one of the current nuclear powers. We've scheduled a number of tests in the coming years including a test to actually intercept a surrogate target ballistic missile sometime later this year. We will also conduct considerable deployment planning to support future deployment deliberations. Uh, in accordance with the administration's 3 plus 3 strategy for our National Missile Defense Program, that is three years to develop this capability and be prepared to deploy a system in another three years, the year 2000 will be our first opportunity to review both the threat and our development efforts and the costs associated with it, and to make a deployment decision based upon those criteria. If a decision is made in 2000 to deploy a limited system, we expect the system to be deployed by the year 2003. If it is determined that no threat exists, development efforts will continue with the goal of always being able to field a system within three years. All development efforts under this contract will be in compliance with the 1972 ABM Treaty, and if a system is deployed, it may require future modifications to that treaty. Now, ladies and gentlemen, along with uh, the program manager, Brigadier General Joe Cusmano, I'll be happy to take any questions that you might have. General Cusmano, please join me. Yes. Can you break down the criteria in terms of how close the competitors came 
and technology and management was Boeing way ahead, just about on the margins, kind of go down each category on that? We have not debriefed to have the opportunity to debrief uh, both the winner and the loser in this particular case, so I don't want to get into those specific details. It was a clear decision, I can tell you that, uh, and Boeing clearly was the winner from a best value determination. Can I do a follow-up? Sure. Did the THAAD problems come back to haunt the UMDC team? Past performance, as I stated, uh, was a consideration. Past performance is always a consideration in all major source selections in the Department of Defense today. Uh, to be honest with you, it was not a major discriminator in this particular case. Yes. Can you talk at all about the um, booster options, um, with, with the, what Boeing proposed for its, com for its alternative to the Minuteman 3 and also um, what UMDC did? Uh, you may be aware that we actually asked both contractor teams to propose two booster options, both a, uh, a commercial off-the-shelf variant and also the Minuteman variant. So both contractors actually gave us both the options of a booster. Uh, Boeing's option for a commercial off-the-shelf used some stack-ups of various commercial uh, rocket motors to come up with their configuration, but they also, as we required them to, they also gave us a proposal with the Minuteman as their, uh, as their booster. What were some of the risk reduction proposals that Boeing has put forward, particularly to deal with the, uh, the testing uh, uh, issue? Okay. Let me ask General Kusmano if he could comment on that. Thank you, sir. Uh, Boeing's uh, approach was very comprehensive. They had uh, suggested some additional flight tests that the government saw that would uh, provide an opportunity for uh, risk mitigation for the program, in addition, some additional booster testing very early on in the development process. So that was uh, clearly a, an indication that they had a fairly strong test program, at least outlined, for this proposal. Does this mean at least a, a second integrated test before you face the, uh, the review in 2000? It certainly does. <laughs> There's at least another question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Boeing has well publicized troubles on its commercial line, which this be, as Boeing itself has said, fairly general management failure. This clearly didn't weigh with you. Would you tell us why? Uh, we did not look at very many of their, their commercial programs in evaluating past performance. We stuck specifically to looking at their performance on DOD and government, other government agency uh, contracts. Uh, we did not have the information about specifics on any of their commercial activities. Yes. Uh, the Lockheed Martin uh, Raytheon TRW team clearly had a lot more uh, past performance um, precedence in, in this type of work. Did that somehow work uh, against them in this, or uh, what, what persuaded you that Boeing could uh, catch up? We looked at relevant uh, contracts and relevant performance on the part of both contractor teams in this evaluation. Uh, we looked at things we thought were relevant, even if they were not clearly just missile defense activities they've done in the past. I think we had a fair, uh, comparable evaluation of both past performance systems for both contractor teams. Uh, and as I stated earlier, while past performance is always a major consideration, it really was not a major discriminator in this particular source selection. Let me get to yeah. uh, Sir, could you uh, fill us in a little bit on when you expect the contract to be signed and work to actually begin, and what would be the first sort of milestone that would have to be achieved under this new contract? Let me answer the first question, then I'll give General Cosman a time, chance to ask you the second. The contract was signed this afternoon, so and as far as I'm concerned, we are underway. Uh, so work has already begun on the program. As far as the next ma uh, major milestone, I think General Cosman can give you some specifics. <coughs> Uh, the first thing that uh, we're going to do, and I'll, I'll get into some details, uh, is meet with the, the winning contractor on Monday and Tuesday and have a management meeting and, and outline some of the op opportunities for uh, communication exchanges over the next month or two. Essentially, this summer, we'll uh, get together in a session that we call the System Functional Review, and we'll review their proposal and the requirements for the system that the government has laid out. Uh, and finally, uh, will culminate with a, a longer range milestone of their ability to uh, take over and be responsible for the integrated system test, our first integrated system test in FY99. And uh, as we've already mentioned earlier in this uh, question and answer session, uh, they are proposing more than one integrated system test. Okay. What do yes. you explain the, the, uh, the 5.2 billion and the options? Is that just for sustaining or is that for sustaining and deployment. Okay. The instant contract for the next three years for the development part, the three-year base contract is $1.6 billion. 
The deployment option, if we, there is a decision to deploy an initial capability, plus three years of sustainment, three years of uh, ops and maintenance uh, sustainment, uh, comes up to about $2 billion. And there's a continued development option if we do not make a, a formal decision to deploy. All total is $5.2 billion. That's in that's the specific contract. Yes. And won't uh, a Boeing now uh, end up having to work with, uh, with two of the three partners who were uh, who constituted the UMDC, I mean Raytheon, because it's developing the ground-based radar and TRW because it has the BMCQ contract. And do you anticipate any any difficulties with that? We do not anticipate any difficulty. Uh, the obvious answer to that question is yes. There will be some uh, involvement with uh, Raytheon from their past efforts and and also TRW. There are lots of other subcontractors throughout the country that are also going to be involved in this that were proposed specifically as part of the team with Boeing. Uh, but there's a clear recognition that, uh, that your statement is a, is a valid one. Yes. Question, ensuring that test planning, there's integrity to the system. You'll have, you, you may be criticized for having the contractor planning tests that may be grading their performance. What plans do you have to kind of oversee to ensure integrity in planning? Uh, let me ask uh, General Cusman to answer that, and I will amplify if necessary. Go ahead, General. The way that we uh, intend to manage uh, this contract is through an integrated process team where we have the government managers and the contractor managers together. And one of those teams is a test and evaluation team. And essentially there's an agreement that is reached between the government and the contractor on the test and evaluation plan. And in fact, the plan that we have right now and have been executing over the past year is a government test and evaluation plan as we attempted to take the pieces and integrate those as a government. And now we're turning over that plan to the lead system integrator. He will make suggestions, and he has already in his proposal, and we'll sit down with him now and adjudicate between the government plan that existed before and his proposal, and then we'll proceed with a new test and evaluation plan or make changes as necessary to the current plan. In, in submitting their proposals, did the uh, contractors have to recommend uh, basing a number of sites and where they would be located? If they did, can you describe Boeing's basing plan? If they didn't, can you tell us when they have to do that? As part of the proposal, we actually gave each contractor team a sort of test case, if you will, to evaluate their thorough understanding of the complexity of the problem, how they would integrate capabilities, et cetera. Uh, they did tell us where they would recommend some specific basing. Uh, I'd rather not get into that right, uh, right now at this particular moment. Uh, we, as part of our discussions with the contractors, will be discussing those with uh, them, uh, with Boeing in this particular case. But they did give us their recommendations on how they would react to specific threats and the, where they would recommend that we base, uh, base a capability if we deploy. And that's the, the qualifier, if we deploy. Um, just a follow up. The, the, if you deploy, if you make a decision in 2000, you start procuring it in 01, but the budget cycle for that starts next summer. Uh, don't you have to make some, give me an idea of when you have to make some of these fundamental decisions about where you're going to base it and that kind of thing. Well, the, the key question relative to basing is going to be depending on where the threat, if there is a threat and where the threat might be emanating. Uh, the basing, as we have discussed many times to those who have been familiar with the program, the basing decision is going to be based clearly on the threat. Uh, you, we will not decide or not decide to deploy or decide a location until we understand where the threat might, uh, might be coming from. Uh, relative to your question on cost and the timing of the budget cycle, one of the things we clearly wanted from both contractors were their recommendations on long lead items and long lead money that we would have to plan for uh, roughly in the year 2000 to ensure we could support a 2003 deployment date if a decision is made to deploy in the year 2000. We now have that understanding from, uh, from both teams, and obviously we have the winner's recommendation on that. So, so just about, do you anticipate, therefore, as a prudential measure, going ahead and, and asking for allocations of that money within the, uh, within the budget cycle, even before you've actually made the decision 
to go forward or not? Right now, I don't think so. Based on the information that we received from the contractors, we have not decided that we need to do that. We will be looking at what they specifically have recommended, both in terms of quantities of items and dollars, to see if we think it is, is prudent to try to do something like that. But the key is to make sure we don't get ahead of the deployment decision process. That will not be made until we know what the threat looks like and we know what kind of capability we have. Here's a question back here. Yes, sir. You said that uh, past performance was not a major factor in this one. Could you explain what the, the primary consideration was? Was it cost? Uh, it was technical, uh, somewhat management of the factors we looked at, some elements of that, uh, and also cost. Uh, now, there are different gradations of each one of those, so I don't want to get into the specific details until we've had a chance to sit down and formally debrief uh, both contractors, and particularly the contractor that was not selected. It's not fair to them to, to say anything more at this particular point. There's a question over here. General, now that you've made the decision, do you have any type of rough timeline as to when you would like to bring back the Welsh panel to look in more detail at the, at the Boeing plan? The, I had promised uh, both the Senate uh, and also others that we would reconstitute uh, and reconvene the, uh, the Welch panel, the General Welch panel, to take a look at the proposed testing approach. This uh, system review point that General Cusmano mentioned earlier, I think is probably the proper milestone at, at which to do that. We want the contractor to get up and running first and to refine some of their proposals before we bring in a major critique like that. Uh, but we've committed to do so and we will, we will make that happen. Yes. How, how close were the cost uh, beds? Were they very close or were they uh, a while apart? Uh, if there was a, a significant difference, I, I'd rather, again, not get into the specifics right now since I've given you what the information is about the uh, Boeing's cost. If I give you a specific percentage, I will let you know about the other. And we haven't debriefed them yet. It's just not fair to them until we've had opportunity to do that. Other than Russia and China, no rogue nation, no nation that I know of has, has an ICBM capability. Do they? Are there any others? Uh, I think many people have stated before that uh, we will evaluate and, and depend on the intelligence uh, community to evaluate both where a threat may emanate uh, and also the timing of such a threat. Uh, the statements have been made previously about uh, it would take anywhere from 10 to 15 years before a rogue nation could have such a capability. Uh, this program is laid out so that uh, if there are any uncertainties with that, we could try to react to it and provide a, a limited protection for the United States. Yes. When is uh, uh, the uh, UMDC going to be debriefed? Or they have to formally request the debrief. I'm hoping that they will do that instantly so that we can respond literally within a couple of days. Yes. Don't you guys now feel a certain sense of relief that you can turn <laughs> over this NMD headache to a, to a private contract? Well, our contract strategy was to bring on a lease systems integrator or a prime contractor, as some may, may call it. Uh, ultimately, we are still intimately involved and we are responsible for the program. So we're very happy to have reached this particular milestone. Uh, but in some respects, the work is just beginning. Can you, uh, in layman's terms, describe what it is that you're buying with this $1.6 billion? I mean, is this the national missile defense system? Is it a key component of it? How would you describe what it is that, that you're contracting? Let me ask the program manager to, to comment on that, and he, he can explain in great detail. Um, I'm often asked that, that same question, uh, what are we really buying? And, and the answer is we're buying his approach to the NMD uh, problem. And as General Lyle said, the, the whole uh, business about when to deploy and where to deploy will be based upon how we perceive the threat. So in fact, what this contractor is doing over the next three years is developing a toolbox made of elements that you see on this chart behind me that would be put together in architectural fashion and deployed based upon a threat. And so in fact, what he will be doing is discussing with me his ability to mature that toolbox, those pieces, if you will, and provide me a range of architectures over the next three years so that in the year 2000, if in fact we do make a deployment decision, then we can pull from that bookcase of architectures those mature elements and deploy them in a fashion to meet that threat. Is this a case where you have to develop new technology or is this a case of simply making existing technology work? In, in most cases, there is a technology that we have been working on for a number of years. And I say uh, on many occasions that the most stressing technology uh, that we have is the exoatmospheric kill vehicle. The kill vehicle actually goes in outer space 
and impacts with the incoming reentry vehicle. We call that hit to kill technology. We've demonstrated that a couple of times in the past, but we haven't demonstrated that repeatedly. And so that is a challenge for us. But the technology that supports that uh, has been in development for a number of years, and we're continuing the maturation of that technology. Let me just add to that, that comment. Uh, integration, integrating all of those existing technologies is the challenge, and that's the key thing that we brought this contractor on board to, to do, uh, to pull all the pieces together. Uh, somebody may ask, if, if you had these disparate programs going on, why didn't the government uh, become the integrator? Our history and other programs throughout DOD, it's not very, very shiny relative to us being the integrator. We wanted to bring on a prime contractor uh, to be the integrator, to have accountability and total systems performance responsibility to pull it all together into an integrated uh, capability that will work for us. How confident are you that this is going to work? Uh, we are very confident that we have the right technologies. We're confident we have the right team uh, to do the job. Uh, we know there are some challenges out there, and it's going to be very tough. The biggest challenge we've had, uh, we think we have, is time frame. We're doing this in a, ver in a very aggressive manner compared to other Department of Defense acquisition and de development programs. That, to me, is probably the biggest challenge. I know we can do it eventually. Our challenge is to do it very, very quickly. Yes. I just had a question on the contract mechanics. This is a cost plus contract with an incentive fee. Uh, how do they make their money? It's the incentive fee, is that correct? It's cost plus award fee. Award There's fee. obviously award uh, some profits involved in that. I don't want to get into the mechanics right now. But the award fee is a big, big provision, not just before the contractor, but it's also a, a major tool for us to incentivize the contractor for doing what we want them to do and doing good things beyond that. It's also the way we are going to structure the award fee process where the contractor will not get award fee if he doesn't do the things that we put him on contract to do. So it's a good motivator both ways. Yeah, the 1.6, part of that is set aside for the award fee? Uh, there is some portion of the fee that will be in there, yes. 15%? I uh, don't want to quote it right now, and uh, I can't tell you exactly right now unless General Cussman I, I, will we'll have to we provide really that later. We haven't discussed that with the, uh, with the winning contractor yet, so we need to sit down and do that at the earliest opportunity, the details of that. Yeah. Uh, sir, you've said many times that the, the emphasis on schedule has caused problems in other programs, particularly on the TMD side. What confidence do you have that the same sort of problems won't crop up on the NMD side? Uh, primarily because of lessons learned, I, I think. We, uh, we've had the experience on other programs. Uh, we have tried to capitalize off of those lessons learned. Uh, we specifically asked these contractors as part of our proposals to identify the technical risk up front and then more importantly identify the risk mitigation plans that they would propose to make sure we mitigate those risks and we uh, bring them down as low as we possibly can. So from the very beginning, we have been addressing the issue of risk uh, and the time compression and made sure that the contract was going to propose a plan to help us get around that and still try to do this as aggressively as we possibly can. In, in, in simple terms on this related question on testing, did the fact that Boeing was proposing doing early, early testing, there's been a lot of criticism that a lot, there isn't enough testing in some of the theater programs. Was, was that a factor in, in their favor? The it, did turn out to be, it did turn out to be one factor, yes. Yes. In light of Thad's testing problems, do you, do you really believe that hit-to-kill technology is ready to be deployed uh, in your time frame? Not ready to be deployed. Hit-to-kill technology is, is, is here, and I have uh, no doubts at all that we can make it work. Uh, we're going to be proving it uh, probably next on our theater programs, uh, but there, in my opinion, my technical opinion, I don't think there's anything that will prevent us from making that a success. EKV, uh, EKV test schedule for? Uh, the uh, test, the next test, which is an intercept test, as you know, we've had two successful sensor tests, one in uh, June of 97 and then, then the latest one in January of 98, and the next intercept test is scheduled for this fall. And you're going to do one with the Raytheon, one with the Boeing? Right. We have two competitors, Raytheon and Boeing, have been competing for a number of years uh, for the exoatmospheric kill vehicle, which is really that part of the interceptor that separates from the booster and intercepts the RV in outer space. Uh, we will discuss that with the bidder, the, the winning contractor, that is, because uh, each contractor had proposed a down select plan, and we'll discuss that with them and reach a conclusion. That's right. One final question. 
to, to, just to get into the weeds of the contract, given that there were only two big competitors, did you have a BAFO stage in the contract? Yes, we did. We and, did have and, a best and final offer stage. And did, and, and did, uh, did Boeing significantly alter or improve its, its, uh, its bid uh, in the BAFO stage? Uh, no. Uh, the BAFO stage was not a significant change, but we did go through that, that process. We could take one more. Thank you, yes. Are you still on track now to make the decision on the booster in 90 days? Yes. The, uh, we had, the government has the responsibility for deciding on which booster is viable to use, uh, either a commercial off-the-shelf variant or Minuteman. We are on track to make that decision within 90 days of contract awards. So the clock starts today. Thank you, Thank you very much.